complaint, um, and the community is very responsive to that. Now, in terms of governments, obviously, they, they do, in many places around the world, have the ability to uh, censor. Um, and uh, we do face uh, censoring in a lot of places around the world. So the, probably the most important uh, place where censorship is a major problem is China. Uh, China, um, well, we were completely banned in China for three years. We're now available in China. But even today, they filter certain pages that they don't like. Um, in China, it's a very there are certain very sensitive topics. Um, things like uh, Tiananmen Square is sensitive. Uh, Falun Gong, which is a well, they say it's a crazy cult, and I have to agree, it's kind of a crazy cult. But they don't even like people to, to have neutral facts about it. They just really are trying to suppress it uh, very strongly. Um, they have. Uh, Issues about Taiwan and, and is Taiwan independent or not, also a very difficult topic to even talk about in China. Even presenting a very neutral statement is something that they're not comfortable with. So they're filtering certain pages, but things have improved a lot in China. They're, you know, Most of Wikipedia is available in China and so on. All around the world, there are many, many uh, countries now who have implemented uh, technological filtering of the internet um, at the backbone level, in a way very similar to what China does. Um, and this is a problem. Um, we do see in many places around the world uh, certain opposition political figures. Uh, the uh, content is, is filtered out of Wikipedia. Um, I'll just give one last example, um, which is a, a country that has fairly mild censorship, but I think it shows some of the problems with it. So Thailand. Uh, in Thailand, uh, is, a, is a monarchy and um, it's illegal in Thailand to criticize the king. Um, well, people in Thailand, they actually love the king and uh, he is actually a good king, I think. He led them out of military dictatorship. Um, he, he's been a stabilizing influence and they have, um, well, a problematic democracy, but they're, you know, they're doing okay and he's a pretty good king. But still, you're not allowed to criticize him, which I think is wrong. But the real problem with that is not that very narrow thing that you cannot criticize the king. I mean, that's a problem. It's a fairly narrow problem because the king isn't directly involved in politics. The problem is, is that the people who are responsible for uh, running the system are often accused of going beyond that mission. Uh, they, they sometimes censor things that aren't criticizing the king, but that are in fact criticizing the current government, which you should be able to criticize under Thai law. So one of the problems is once you allow for that first step of the government controlling information, it's very difficult to stop them from expanding that, uh, that, that control of information. So um, we do face this problem. I try to speak about it uh, to say that I think it's a mistake. But I also think um, these problems are, the, the trend is in the right direction. Um, and the trend is, uh, even in China, they're beginning to open up more and more. They're realizing that the censorship doesn't really achieve the goals that they want it to achieve. Um, and uh, that it's not the right way. And of course, people don't like it. And so it's, it's something that uh, more and more uh, people on the internet are realizing that it's, it's a very bad idea. Okay. Io volevo chiedere come mai avete sentito la necessità di inserire la figura di un editore o di un revisore che prima visualizza le, i, nuovi, i nuovi commenti, le nuove modifiche che vengono fatte alla, alle pagine di Wikipedia e se non pensate che questa limitazione alla libertà che c'era prima di editare Wikipedia allontanerà la gente o comunque parte della gente che prima ci scriveva, visto che comunque anche lei ha detto che le persone in Wikipedia hanno gli strumenti veloci per isolare o modificare le pagine che fatte in modo scorretto. Yes, well, so um, I agree with you completely and I sympathize with the problem that people are having today uh, because the news media has been so confused about this that there's a lot of wrong information. Um, we, it's, it's been very commonly said in lots of places that we're introducing some kind of uh, uh, professional board of editors who are controlling the content. This is completely false. Um, and some of the news reports are more accurate and some are less accurate. There's so much confusion, it's uh, really quite, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what to do. So, to basically what we want to do then is I should explain what has, uh, what we are doing in Wikipedia and how I see the future of this. 
So within Wikipedia, we have always had the ability to uh, lock pages. So normally what happens is if there's some kind of trouble on a page, so someone continues to post some uh, vandalistic remarks, um, or there's a big fight and people are just going back and forth, um, we, we can protect the page and we can say, no editing for a while. And that's not someone in the office doing it, that's the community, that's the people who are elected administrators um, from the community have the ability to do this. And they have a lot of checks and balances, there are a lot of rules about when can you lock something, um, everyone can see who locked it and then they can complain about it and they can argue amongst themselves. There's a whole process behind that, which I think is quite democratic and works quite well, so that we only protect things for very specific reasons. Well, the problem with locking an article, uh, in the old days when we locked it, no one could edit it, um, except administrators, and even they didn't edit while protected because uh, it's not fair if they are able to edit other people aren't. We didn't like that because one of the things that happens is an article may be protected at a time when lots of good people want to come and make it better and they want to improve it and it's just a problem. So we changed to a system uh, that's much more widely used called semi-protection uh, where when something is semi-protected you can edit it um, only if you've had an account for four days. So in order to edit something very famous uh, like George W. Bush uh, or Barack Obama in the English Wikipedia, um, if you're not logged in, you can't edit it. If you want to edit it, you have to log in and then wait for four days, then you would be able to edit it. Uh, so this is a minor slowing of um, people's participation, but only in a very narrow group of articles, and it's articles like those. So um, uh, every now and then, I we used to see uh, some brave administrator would say, oh, I'm going to un unlock uh, George W. Bush, because I think it shouldn't be locked, and I'll watch it um, personally, I'll make sure there's no vandalism. Um, and then usually, uh, you know, four hours later, completely exhausted, they would say, oh, I give up, I see, it has to be protected, because if you want to protect George W. Bush, um, you know, it takes maybe uh, 30 seconds before somebody replaces the entire entry with curse words, um, because, I don't know, somehow he's not very popular. Um, um, but even, you know, for Barack Obama, who I think is more popular um, around the world, still, he's the President of the United States, so someone will, will do something. Well, um, even this we don't like, because now, uh, you know, someone who wants to contribute and they're not trying to cause trouble, they come to the Barack Obama article and they say, oh, I want to add some information that I researched, and they can't, and they just get frustrated and leave. So what we're introducing is uh, something called flag revisions, and the idea here is, instead of locking those entries, um, you can edit them, and some of these things, they're going to be editable by the general public for the first time in years. Um, but the difference will be that you can edit those entries, but that, that if you're a newcomer, uh, your edit won't go live until somebody who's more experienced, and it's not just administrators, it's anyone who's been around for a while, um, has approved that edit. So what's in fact going on is that we're going to be opening up Wikipedia more than ever before to allow more participation even on very controversial articles where we weren't able to allow open participation in the past. So that's a very different story from the, the story that's typically told. And the reason is, uh, well, uh, people who don't understand Wikipedia very well, um, they naturally, uh, particularly the news media has always had this problem of, anytime there's a change in Wikipedia, they want to interpret it as, oh, finally they realize that our way of doing it is the only possible way and they're going to hire professional editors. Uh, it's very difficult for them to say, oh, actually, openness is not the enemy of quality. Uh, that there are very, of course, important questions. Uh, Wikipedia is not uh, anarchy. Um, it is a social structure. There are tools. There are controls. For us, it's always thinking about what are the tools that the community needs uh, in order to control for quality. We know that there are a very tiny uh, number of people out in the world who are just troublemakers, and they're... Some of them are just um, having a joke. Some of them are actually crazy. Uh, some of them are very, maybe politically motivated. There's a lot of different kinds of troublemakers. Um, and we have to deal with them. But um, we want to deal with them in such a way that is as narrow as possible so that good people don't get um, shut out of the process um, along the way. So we're going to be introducing it. Now I should say as a footnote, in the German language Wikipedia, they uh, were the first to experiment with flag revisions they made the choice to use it everywhere. And so you can say that the German Wikipedia, in that sense, is not as open as it used to be. 
In the English Wikipedia, we're not going to use it that way. We're going to use it very much the way we